Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Smite Central's Battle for Olympus, right here on Twitch.tv slash Mike Game. My name is F. Dot, joined here by my colleague and co-host, Kret, and today we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of teams, but right now, who are we starting off with, Kret? We're going to start the day with Versace Crew on the left and Digisurge on the right. New Wa will be the first ban. Loki also taken off the table, and now Versace Crew... And, you know, special reminder, this is sort of the first big tournament on the new patch where bans probably have changed a lot. I mean, with the Chins nerf, you're probably going to see Osiris going way down, maybe Jean Kui coming up. And we're probably going to have a very different set of the original four bans. And this time, it's actually going to be Osiris staying on that ban list. Osiris is still a strong character in the sense that he does what he used to do just a little bit slower because of the chins nerf and literally because of the attack speed nerf. But all in all, still a strong character, definitely can shut down healing for an extended period of time. But if we take a look at the other bands, Kret Loki and Jiankui, kind of standard and Nuwa, first time we get to see her in a competitive environment, already banned out. Yeah, a lot of potential on that new character. Uh, Geb's going to be the first pick here. So Athena, probably going to pick up by Digisurge in this first set of banning. They're going to go for Mercury and Habwa. Habwa likely in the solo lane. Mercury is typically a jungler, but we have seen the rise of Merc ADC, and it's very hard to deal with because you can't shut him down hard enough early game, or rather, it's hard to. And then eventually he just comes online with that Rage, with that Deathbringer, and punches your ADC, kills them in two hits. Very difficult to deal with, and we'll see if Versace crew has some sort of strategy to handle Mercury if it isn't that ADC rule. Yeah, Mercury is all about control rather than really fighting, as opposed to the typical hunter v hunter fights we see in that long hand lane. So it's a much different approach than most teams are used to. Freya and Artemis being picked up, despite the nerf that she got recently to her volley suppress the insolence, still a high priority pick. But Geb being first pick overall, correct? Doesn't surprise me at all. He's he's one of the strongest characters in the game, and with the Chins nerf even stronger and like you said athena being picked up in that guardian role for digisurge yeah i mean she's really the other guardian geb and uh and athena are the top two right now and then there's always the question of what's your support's third guardian you generally don't want to get there so if geb is taken first athena should be taken sometime during the first phase so it's not going to get counterbanned away it's going to be ao kuang taken off the board by Digi Surge and uh, now Versace Crew could be looking at a mid lane ban. It's pretty ambiguous, and I think the safest ban is going to be. Uh... Actually, no, there is no safe ban because the Digi Surge draft is very ambiguous. They're going to get rid of On Her, but as we said, Mercury could go ADC. Agni picks up for the middle lane. Ambiguity is continued, but uh, it's going to be Habwa in the solo. So now the question is Mercury in the Hunter role? Or is Mercury in the jungle? And Digisurge might not have even decided yet, which is the beauty of this uh, this new versatility that Mercury has, where it's like, all right, where is he going to have a good matchup? That's true. The On Her ban is definitely a targeted ban, Kret. On Her is a potent character, but only really when used at the top of his skill ceiling. So it's it's an individual ban uh, for, for the most part. We see Chalk being hovered in the Changa to round out the crew. So that's going to be a nice front line with that Chalk and Geb standing up there with Changa support. Earl is going to take the Hunter role for Digisurge. So that answers that question. We have the Uller. Yeah, it's going to be Mercury in the jungle, but my question is, either Chalk or Chunga has to go mid, right? I mean, Artemis is going to be the hunter, Freya is going to be the jungler. Uh, I mean, could be solo with Chalk jungle, right? But, like, we're definitely going to see an unconventional mid god from Versace crew, which is a great way to start off the day. But up against Agni, unconventional mids sort of lose a little bit of their strength because... I think a big part of what makes unconventional mid so strong is it's like, yeah, you don't know how to play against me, right? Like, I've got kill potential on you, and Agni's... Nobody really has kill potential on Agni. He just dashes away, and he's totally safe. 55 yards nearly instantly can be interrupted by stuns, but it's very unlikely because of how fast the dash is. 
I do not want to see Chunga in the solo lane, though. I think she has a very difficult time up against Hapla. You have to play it perfectly, or you probably just die. I agree. Chunga definitely has a hard time against Hubla in the, in the solo lane. And while I think that Shock is probably the best fit for the center lane, I think you're right with that solo analysis. Kret Chunga is going to be the way to go. Digisurge, good band with the Alquang, making sure to avoid the obvious and uh, incredible setup that Freya brings to the table. And we'll see how well it works out for them in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with some more Smite action. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our first matchup of the day. Versace Crew in the blue versus Digisurge in the red. We're going to see what these two teams will face off and wind up with. And looking at the builds, Kret, our question has generally been answered, and we should see Chunga in that middle lane. Yeah, uh, Digisurge over here really wanted to make something happen, but tipped their hand a little early. They should have heard the ward go down right behind this speed camp, but they're still grouping up like Gold Fury. Like, they want to make something happen, and here we're going to see the whole team disperse. Like, it's just being safe. Silent kill, like the way your mic might be silent right now, crap. But we're going to see some good uh, engagement going on in the left-hand lane. Artemis, the Queen of Pokes, still there, despite the base damage nerf on that. But there we get a jump in at level 2. The Zapman rules. Good taunt onto the tank. CSDJ about half HP after some great poke. And Digisurge is going to win that engagement in spades over there in the long lane without a death. On the right hand side, it looked like an attempt at an invade coming out from uh, Digisurge, but just a little bit too late. Red buff looks like it actually rotted away. I don't think the invade stole it. That face killer doesn't have a red. Aqua Kangaroo is a blue, so something weird happening there. In the left hand lane, though, CSDJ is going to get taken down by a nice auto attack from Lou, just sliding past Artemis' hitbox. And connecting for first blood. They've been aggressing on that, Geb, the entire lane time since uh, first bell, essentially, Kret. You know, Geb is, has a notoriously bad laning phase, and yeah. that's what you gotta do. Teams see the Geb, they say, alright, we're not gonna be able to kill the Hunter because Geb is gonna protect them till the world ends, so we'll just kill Geb instead. And Digisurge is going to take that kill and move on and steal the speed buff. Yeah, you always talk about the stuff after the stuff, and this is exactly it. Mercury did use his special delivery for mobility here, so that could be a mistake, but the hogs will come down. Instinctivity on that Athena, taking a lot of damage. Nice stun out from BK Haste. The axe isn't going to stun. Four members of Digisurge grouped up. They're going to look for the Artemis, and with no way out, she will... Ooh, just get taken down by the Hail of Arrows, almost able to juke her way to safety, but in the end, it's going to be another kill for Digisurge. Dual lane for Digisurge playing lights out at the moment. Lou really on point with that Uller play. Really big fan of seeing that, because it's all mechanics, correct? There's no ultimate, there's no big burst damage, it's all, can you land the stun? Can you land the hard-to-hit Hail of Arrows? Can you shoot the bladed arrow straight ahead of you? And... Uller has been playing very well so far, sitting uh, not top farm. Believe it or not, that belongs to Your right tower is under 
Yeah, Habwa in this soul lane is definitely doing a good job controlling Aqua Kangaroo on shock. Emerald Talisman makes you very hard to push out of lane. You've got great mana sustain even once your blue goes down. You've got the healing on shock. But the price of not having any AD on your starting build is significantly reduced wave clear, which Belto is taking advantage of. Habwa generally doesn't have a clear advantage in his lanes, but in this situation, he's able to do so, and now he's able to rotate for the mid camps, coming up behind Chunga and Freya. Knockup gives away his presence, but this could still be favorable. And it's going to be a special delivery into the Defender of Olympus. A nice waxing moon comes through to peel off for the team, four members of Digi Surge in the area. They did get the left camp, they will get the right camp, but Chinga saves the day. No more kills going the way of Digi Surge. Yeah, Digi Surge, like you said, it's going to monopolize these camps so far. Three out of the four camps have gone to them, and of course that's where a large majority of the gold comes from. But again, gotta highlight that play. Uh, Chunga hit the perfect waxing moon. Otherwise, that was at least two deaths right there in the middle lane to bring Digi Surge to four. But with a simple one ultimate, Digi Surge stays at two. We're going to see Gab leaning against this Ogni, and he's actually going to aggress. The SDJ takes some poke. About two, one ultimate worth, but with that shield, going to be able to sustain absolutely just fine. Yeah, Gab actually winning that trade thanks to his archers, which lit Ogni up. One thing I do want to mention about that quick little fight before we move on is Habwa elected not to ult there. He thought he could be greedy and get away without using it, and he did drop the kill. The ultimate would have secured at least a kill onto Freya. At the very least, Digi Surge in the left hand lane still staying incredibly aggressive. Level six and seven on uh, the two characters for the red team, whereas six and five I'm looking at the blue team. So they have the right to really keep pushing this, and that's what they're doing. Right hand lane, shot caught out. Three members of red team around him. Here we have the Mercury coming from behind. Special delivery is going to hit. Not a good hit from the Habwa. That's going to miss. Silence for three seconds, so that's going to take down the Mercury. Athena, on the other hand, going to play it safe despite 2v1. And Aqua Kangaroo gets away with a kill and Your safely from a game. Right, so that was a four-man collapse that ended up splitting off. Instinctivity ulted over, BK Hay stuck with him, and they were able to zone off the rotation from Versace Crew. However, that Stone of Gaia now, formerly the Emerald Talisman, onto Chalk, 70 magic protection. And when you're up against a Habwa that does not yet have any penetration, as he hasn't returned to base and is currently sitting on roughly 2,000 gold, He's just not going to do enough damage to Chalk to make anything happen. This is one of those situations where you don't gank the solo lane because you probably just won't be able to get a kill. Yeah, Shock is a thick character in and of himself, plus that incredible uh, magical protection on him is definitely going to really thwart anything that Habwa can bring to the table at least until a little bit later. Athena's going to mess around over here, just kind of staying clearing the wave as both these characters are thick and... Not really damage oriented just yet, so really no damage gonna happen in here despite the level advantage for Aqua Ooh, Kangaroo. In the long lane though, Lou is gonna force out Tusky. Will take some damage from the boar and a few auto attacks, but he's returning it with Hail of Arrows and Barbed Arrow. Not gonna be able to get a kill, no chance of that, but will force the recall on Artemis. In the middle lane, it's gonna be a one for one trade on the left camp. Freya is rotating around, will be spotted on ward, so that's probably not gonna have anything happen in that left hand lane actually finds the bandage this could be a kill jump away from Lou Valkyrie's discretion three four hits but not enough damage thou face kill a too low level only level five on that Freya taking a look at the other side of the jungle you know we have we've got Via at level oh hold on in the middle lane instinctivity finds a really good taunt uh, sonic booms available not gonna be used a nice waxing moon once again peeling for Versace crew. Good peel again. You know, this Chang'e mid actually has worked out specifically because of the use of those waxing moons. Chang'e traditionally not seen in the middle lane for... Honestly, it, it's not for safe ability, if you will. Chang'e is a very safe yeah. character. It's about the lack of presence and the lack of impact in those other lane ganks, but as we've seen, uh, Chang'e hasn't really rotated with, with Hubblock. 
Yeah, well, it's all it's options? also uh, it's also a bit of clear coming out and Chinga has been able to actually do really surprisingly well I mean granted that silent killer is currently down Looks like actually only just 300 gold and yeah. when you account for the amount of mid camps lost That's effectively even in lane. He's behind because of what happened in the mid camps and that's a whole different story It's also gonna be a snuck gold fury coming out from Secret digi surge gold. Just to put them very far ahead, uh, Versace crew went back, they didn't have ward coverage, and Digi Surge just kind of went for it with the Mercury with the Ur. You can kill that very quickly, and now an invade. That face killer is about to have a really bad time. Taunt, he's dead. shield wall, death. Yeah. Kill Absolutely destructive. Just level 9 aggressing onto a level 6 jungler behind. You're gonna put a Freya even more behind, and right now they're gonna look for the left lane and put them behind. Sankum cancelled, looking for something else, gonna miss the special delivery, but it's 3 on 4. 3 on 2 with a 4th coming from the backside. Good cataclysm for the blue team, but that's a dead hunter, and now they're gonna find the Geb. No stun! And he's gonna roll out to safety. Ah, but Chunga is rotating in, likely just to try and hold the tower. We'll see if that can happen. There's a lot of auto attack damage here, but only one minion remains, so this could be dangerous. Viva just going to dash away. Six minions heading down the wave, uh, down the lane. Digi Surge, though, they're going to opt to invade the blue real quick, just taking away any jungle whatsoever and keeping Freya behind. Level 6 jungler versus level 9. Very good attention to objectives right here coming out from the red team today, Kret. You know, these teams, uh, we, we talk about the stuff after the stuff, and this is the literal embodiment of it. Every single time they've gotten a kill or gotten some map presence by pushing somebody out of lane, they take something. Even if it's as insignificant as small harpy. They're taking it, they're taking it away in spades. Frey's a character that comes online after some farm, and right now she's definitely having a hard time with that. The other thing I do want to mention is instinctivity on this Athena. Oh, hold on, a nice kill on the left-hand lane. Geb hasn't gotten out of that early game just yet. Only level 8, no defensive items yet. And actually, he's going into magic or cooldown boots, which means that uh, up against a very farm, very fed Athena with Midas boots, Geb is going to be behind and stay behind for a long time. That mad killer is in a lot of trouble. Drops Tusky. Lou doesn't have tower aggro just yet. Waiting. Now could go for the burst. Doesn't find the hit. We'll need to jump away. Perfect. Perfect. Caledonian boar coming out over there. Had, the axe was landing had that not happened. Solo lane. Shock. Dropping the ultimate on two. Meldos here. So that's three members on the red team chasing down the blue. Aqua Kangaroo gets the taunt. But he's going to go ahead and turn it back to the other side of the engagement. Might be safe here, Chunga, playing a little bit of resistance. And now Digisurge on their heels, forced out with just 10% life. Ooh, on hold on, though. Members. Agni went for the solo invade on the speed buff. He is going to get the buff. I'd call that worthwhile, but he gives his life for a little bit of speed. Wasn't actually worth, trade but, uh, <laughs> but you get speed buff, right? That's pretty good. Yeah, right now it's an all-on complete invade invasion onto Freya's lifestyle. Freya's the same level as the underfarmed support at the moment, Kret, so... Hold on, right-hand side, Shock gets the kill. Aqua Kangaroo is actually doing really well this game. Now, Aqua Kangaroo probably the shining star at the moment, CSDJ being opp oppressed once more. Instinctivity stuck between three members, she is tanky. She is level 12, and Thalface Killer isn't really going to do much unless a couple of spurts come out. But Lou, looking for a couple, gets one onto the Geb, hits the Reign of Arrows, gets two onto Thalface Killer. Looking to the Artemis, now turns around, 180, not many tools, there's the Tusky to prevent the stun. Tusky's going to go stun Lou, and Instinctivity going to look for something for a taunt as soon as the bees are down, but she's gone. Yeah, Artemis is going to be able to get away under the tower, and now it's up to the choice. Auto attacks, one more, not gonna find it on the right-hand side. It's gonna be two fights breaking out. Agni versus Chunga, not gonna happen. The dive on the left, they're not gonna get it either. Looks like it's just gonna be a reset across the map. Though, Chunga actually pushes up a little bit far. She's looking rather tanky, and uh, 
It doesn't have any defensive items. Agni is just not really doing too much damage to Chungar right now for whatever reason. We are taking a look at the builds. We're about 12 and a half minutes in. Crap, Versace crew is trailing by about 4,500 gold at the moment. So we take a look at Thou Silent Killer's build. You know, she's just building traditional mage. Nothing really defensive or tanky there. It's the illusion of tankiness due to the fact of the uh, invincibility coming from yeah. the two. That's going to be a dead rock real soon. Waxing Moon comes through, but now Chunga could be cut out. She doesn't have the mobility she really needs to get out here, but the Jukes are looking pretty good. Sonic Boom, Path of Flames, that's a kill. Now Artemis is being turned on and Zerg down. I mentioned mobility there, and something I want to touch on is how good Athena has been against this team composition, because you've got Geb, Freya, Chunga, and Artemis, who have a really tough time getting out of that shield wall. Thought that was going to come a little bit earlier out of the shock at Gold Fury. Now Thalman Killer and Aqua Kangaroo, the only ones here for their representative teams. Belto, the captain, absolutely annihilates Artemis. And that's going to be a kill at the 13 and a half minute mark. And Aqua Kangaroo is still here contesting over mid camps, waiting for his friend the Freya. She might get her first kill, and she does. That's going to be a kill onto BK Haste, the center lane for Sinister. Freya's first kill of the match. Yeah, Freya finally able to pick up a kill. Still doing very, very well in farm. And this just comes down to uh, that Versace leeching game, going from lane to lane, picking up as many buffs as possible, and taking lane experience to supplement that. So, really good job from Thalface Killer to stay in the game at the cost of some other lanes, which is fine, because you're Freya, you're more important than the rest of your team and now it's aqua kangaroo who's doing the roaming and that soul lane farm looks like it's gonna go to artemis so nice play across the map but aqua kangaroo in trouble he's finally going to be taking damage from that mercury peeled off with the rollout but habwa comes around csdj once again is not particularly tanky taken down by lu after after a quick uh axe toss and now chunga great waxing moon continues the kite hail varos connects but it's not gonna allow to much Looking for the invade once again. Good practices. Artemis getting some solo farm here, which is dangerous. And Digisurge is doing well. I think the biggest problem they've experienced this game is running out of stuff to do after they get those kills. Pretty much, man. Digisurge is looking absolutely lights out. Um, you know, there's 7,400 gold up. As you said, they're always looking for something else to grab, something to do after the kills. And right now, they're going to find another one. Thou face killer murdered by her back harpies absolute annihilation and at this point in time Fred, did the surges is grouping up in robes of four and five and taking on anyone that wants to provide any sort of resistance yeah and the biggest thing about this group up hold on double taunt that silent kill and csdj that's going to be the gab once again taken down he is so far behind sitting zero and six and Sonic Boom will connect on the now mad kill. A nice use of beats. Tusky comes out. Viva is going to get body blocked by the boar. Oh my goodness. I do want to mention, difference between these two supports is an entire sovereignty. That's 20 protections to every member of the team that DG Search has as an advantage over the Versace crew. Very, very scary. And the Surge extrapolating the lead to about five, uh, six five figures at the moment that's 10,000 in just a couple of seconds they're about 500 short of that mile still but did you is this team that has performed well in these tournaments thus far cret uh, they've been looking for a sponsor lately definitely uh not a team to be slouched on and they're proving it right now with absolute dominance just 16 minutes into this match yeah you know uh coming up we've got this split into the spl and the challengers cup that's going to be next week and so this, this tournament's really cool in that you can sort of get an idea of how the SPL teams are going to perform with their new rosters. Well, we can also get an idea of who could be a threat in the challenger scene. And honestly, Digisurge is looking rather good. They know how to play the invades. Their mechanical skill seems solid. They've got a good team composition. They're making use of their picks. And I really like what I've seen from them so Far. Now they have to close out the game. They're down to 10k lead at 17 minutes, and that's the kind of advantage you dream about. The question is, can they convert it into those inner towers, those phoenixes, those fire giants, and eventually the titan? 
Very true. Closing the game is a much different skill set than just playing the game. That's like one of the harder humps that we see teams yeah. struggle with as they try to make the transition from a good amateur team to, to really the competitive side of things. Getting very aggressive. Maintaining positive map control is Dinsuit. On the right hand side, Fooler just comes out of the jungle, flying out there, lands a beautiful stun. Beads used on Artemis, Tusky comes down. That's going to connect on Aviva, and he could be in a lot of trouble. Will be able to get some movement from the special delivery, but he connects with Shock, which is not a good idea. Agni's raining fire. He uses stun. It does not connect. Chaga in a bit of a tough spot here. Will be turned on by some of the damage from Digisurge as Habwa is zoning out. Frey comes into the fight. Habwa will get banished, uses the beads, looking for damage on CSDJ, and is able to find the kill. Now trying to juke using that Atlas of the Yellow River, but it's not going to find him the way out. Still, Deicide and a, th or a two for five. Great trade, surrender vote, and a tower. Everything looks good for Digisurge. Everything does look good for Digisurge. Crap, they're going to get this tower. I'm going to be curious to see their decision. All right, with three members up, and Versace crew resing kind of soon. They're going to fall back. They're not going to go for that Phoenix. Instead, they're just going to go for more jungle. Not confident enough to take that fire giant. I think at this point, Lou would have been able to provide enough damage that they could take it down. Especially with Athena there. But yeah. they opt for the safe play. And they get ahead into the left jungle after clearing out the right. Right, and so I think here's the reason for the play. Looking at Lou and Viva, they're both building into their first crit item. Probably a rage, some people prefer Deathbringer. Either way, that means they're... Well, let's look at the GPM for these players, right? We're sitting at 433 and 470. So, it's going to be at most four minutes till those items are finished. Yeah, Geb's gonna actually blink in and find a kill. That's cockiness let's say yeah, sometimes you sometimes you, you you let the lead play you instead of yeah. playing the lead and that's exactly what just happened right there You're unfortunately for versace crew it was just a kill and not a stolen gold fury really needed to hog and then kill in that order wanted to get the knock up and wound up getting the kill so no objective gold for the blue team which i guess is a good side of the pillow for digital search in that exchange yeah it doesn't really amount to much it just slows them down but as i said i i don't think that's a huge problem because i think they're just looking to finish off their crit on the right hand side artemis had a good split push and isn't gonna get greedy with it right like not i mean there is no lead but not letting not letting herself get played by the push and sticking around to hit that tower will push the creeps up and then just recall. There's nothing for you here. You're not going to be able to take that tower on a map where your team doesn't have any pressure. So just recall, return to base, get some items, and accept the fact that you got two or three waves of farm freely. Which is honestly really important when you're this far behind. You just get farm wherever you can. But we've got an Athena running around in the jungle looking for opportunities, instinctivity, got that match eyes finished, and he just wants to start something. Digi Surge playing extremely aggressive, pushing Versace all the way back into their bottom 10% of the map. What's going to happen here is we're going to have a 2 3 split. We're going to have two mages, very strong characters right here, completely zoning the enemy team. Well, the other side of things will take care of the fire giant, already down to 50% HP. So, what will happen here is these two mages will get this scumbag fire giant, and they'll immediately engage like we're seeing now. Girdle is good. CSDJ all already basically dead from one hit of the mages. That's going to be one Changa down. Freya does pick up a kill in the midst of things, but Aki Kangaroo falls down to the wayside as well. Viva gets a kill by rolling through, but he's going to fall before he takes out Freya. Good shield from Geb to prevent that shit Freya from falling down right away, but Lou going deep. BK Haste gets the last kill, confirms the DSide. That'll be a Phoenix crap, most likely. Uh, the Titan. Well, not yet. <laughs> Because, and, and we actually saw this, they turn on the Phoenix and like, yeah, we got the kill, we're diving to Phoenix, let's kill the Phoenix. Wait, we don't have the tower down, we can't kill the Phoenix yet. <laughs> so they're going to have to come back and try that one again, but they should get it. Chunga will be up in about a second, but she's not really going to be in a good spot right here. Doesn't have cooldown reduction finish, only has that Bancroft, which isn't giving too much damage. No extra pen items to Chunga right now. 
it, it's basically Versace crew has to have the perfect team fight with all five of them if they want to get those kills and they also need Artemis to get those lucky crits and Freya to somehow get entire pulse all five uh, seconds of pulse off without getting pressured out so it's almost the point where I want to say Versace crew needs to wait for Digisurge to make a mistake. They can't force anything. At this point in the game, Craig, I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to disagree with you. 16,500 gold lead, lead uh, measuring up for Digisurge at the moment, so Versace crew is behind a, a lot. We're looking at an item or two per character. Just by looking at the bottom of the screen, you can tell, and look at the damage that's going on in this game, you can easily tell. This guy's only level 11 at this point in the game, Cred, severely behind, and he's going to be taken out with haste by DK Haste right by those mid camps. Definitely a little bit out of position. Blue team shouldn't be that pushed far up at all. Well, the other problem with Geb is he still doesn't have a sovereignty online. He's actually going to rush into a Nemean line because he's getting killed so hard by those auto attackers. And this is really desperation. It looks like Aqua Kangaroo might be the one going into Samari, but Thou Silent Killer is going to get caught out, and we might not see those items finish at all. Axe gets thrown in, the Thunder Strike, and it's now going to be the Axe from Ur. Doesn't connect Thou Mad Killer, uses Beats. It's going to be a nice Thunderstorm coming through. Freya's up in the air looking to confirm some damage, but doesn't find the kill she wants. Belto will get taken down. Viva in the back, able to stay alive, and just putting out damage with that Meiju look. And so at this point in the fight, Mercury very low on health, but still a big threat using those major looks. Now it's to juke away from Thou Mad Killer on Artemis. Will find the kill. Three members stay alive. They're going to be able to take the Titan. And in the end, Digisurge commanding victory over Versace Crew. Do the surge with the first victory of the day as we talked about 16 and a half thousand gold victory little sloppy fight towards the end but when you're that far ahead cret you can afford to be a little aggressive and that's exactly what they did they came down they retreated after they made their first mistake on that phoenix but after that they just came down and trucked on through they're going to truck on through to the next round as well yeah and i, I think a big part of this game was how Digi Surge punish the early game weaknesses of the Versace crew. I mean, Geb is the perfect example, right? He is very strong in this patch because of the way his passive interacts with crits and the lack of Chin's characters being played. But you still die early, and you die really quickly. CSDJ sort of fell into a trap that can afflict Geb players in general. Cooldown reduction is so good on this character because of his stone shield, but... If you get cooldown boots instead of Midas when you're behind and you don't find a way to catch back up, you just stay behind all game and in the end he was never able to finish his sovereignty. Finish his Nemean line at the last moment, maybe gets 200 more gold, but sovereignty is 2500 and Nemean's 2200, so he might not have been able to finish it at all. Either way, right. Digi Surge is going to be able to move on to the next round where they're going to face off against Snipe Gaming. We're also going to move on to the next round, and that's going to be Blood, Bath, and Beyond's uh, game. That's a team we've seen in our Smite Central Amateur League. We've seen them in Battle for Valhalla. I don't think we've seen them in any of the uh, weekend tournaments from high res recently, but they've definitely got a lot of potential f uh, players, such as Famous Hate on that roster, who you might recognize from a uh, relatively high-level rank play. Very strong ADC player. That'll definitely be an interesting match to look forward to. So we're just going to cut to the break. We're going get, to get into that game as soon as possible, folks. Once again, congratulations to, Z to Digisurge, and we'll see you in a few.